Okay. Itamex Kanatani. Good morning. It is coming on 8 o'clock in the AM. 0800 hours on Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. In the lunar cycle, Gatto. The fourth winter moon. And starting off my day as typical here at Spopikami, although this morning I'm feeling a little bit guilty. Like, why didn't I come prepared to do a five kilometer run down here instead of a walk? I don't need to walk every day. I should be doing runs at least a couple of times a week. So, we'll see. When we get to the forest, I might, you know, drop my cameras and move around a little bit just to just to appease my body I guess I don't know I'm feeling I'm feeling energetic enough that I want to do something but not so energetic that I just I have to do it you know like (laughs) I could have easily stayed in bed this morning I'd have been fine with that but I'm out of bed and so now I feel like you know I should get into the process of the day and enjoy it. We'll see what we'll see where it leads. <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is it's a it's a Wednesday. I'll be going to work at the studio. I don't expect any skunk calls. In fact, if anything, I should go around and pick up some of the old traps today perhaps advertise perhaps put an advertisement out on Facebook because people will be looking for skunk and raccoon trappers here real quick and it's best probably to shuffle them now while the animals are a little pregnant but haven't given birth yet you know um, I think they're a little pregnant now but in any case before they give birth which they haven't yet of course pretty nice out here no geese in the South Pond Spring this morning. And in fact, the waters of the spring have closed up a little bit from what they were. Although that looks pretty thin. I'm betting a, a goose would break through that real quick if they wanted to bring the clan over here again. Let's go check at the river see if they're over there. I don't know, it might be too early because I think our clan, without the open water crag on the river, it's probably too dangerous for them to camp there overnight. They probably are just stopping by during the day and they join up with those geese downstream here at the larger water crag that's still open, you know. Let's see. Oh. Oh, there's geese here. Yes, not many. Six. Six birds. Let's 
It's probably just a family or one oddball. <laughs> Who knows where's the rest of the clan, but there is a bit of open water there. That's all they really needed for that small group to safely stay there. of a pheasant back in there across the river down that way where the water opens up bigger groups of op spinny to the forest. Good morning, City of Lethbridge, Rattlesnake, Olive here. May I help you? Hey, Olive, this is Ryan. It looks like I missed a call from you guys just a few yeah, minutes ago. Yeah, uh, there was a lady that called in, uh, Kate Knowles. She said someone hung a dead raccoon uh, on the corner of Marigrath Drive and 40th Avenue South, and it's on one of the street signs just after Ashley Furniture. Mayor McGrath and 40th? Yeah, 40th Avenue South. Okay. Okay, I'll check it out. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Ryan. Yep. Bye-bye. Well, that's a different different one. Um, just wait for one of my students to get in here, and then we'll go check it out. Got to set up a trap here real quick on the way to deal with that raccoon carcass. This house here on the north side, I don't know how many skunks I've pulled out from this place, but he called this morning and said that his neighbor reported seeing four more skunks in the backyard here. So some trapping again I've probably caught six seven skunks here in the past just out of the same hole so I'll set up and probably tomorrow morning we'll have a skunk to pick up Just at the southern end of Mayor McGrath Drive now, nearing the intersection with 40th Avenue, which is where the raccoon carcass is supposedly displayed. Let's see, we should be coming right up on it here pretty quick. This is 40th Avenue here, 
might be, yeah, might be right in here somewhere. Oh yes, I see it. It's right there. Yikes. Okay, that is not a raccoon. That looks to be maybe a porcupine, I think. Let's pull off over here. I'm thinking porcupine, but somebody said it was a raccoon. No, that's a porcupine. Probably got bumped on the road. All right, I'm gonna take a picture of it. Maybe a couple pictures. That's a large porcupine. Somebody, somebody hung a dead porcupine on the road sign. Oh. Yeah. Bring it down into the coulee here. One of the things about porcupines, even when they're alive and everything, if you pick them up um, faced away from you by their hind legs, or not faced away from you, but faced toward you so that their tail can only kind of thrash away, you pick them up by their hind legs, they can't really do much about it. I've seen guys do it. I've never bothered to try to pick one up like that, but guys do do it. Oh, this is a hefty pork. Hefty porker. Oh, give my arm a little bit of a rest here for a second. We're almost to the edge of the coulee where I feel comfortable ditching him alright leave him here might extract some quills first though before I leave him because this is a big porcupine with lots of good quills. So I think I'll take a bunch of quills. Students will like those. Yeah, look at that. Hey, it's good stuff. I'm gonna go back to the back to the shop. Couple hours have passed, and I'm back at Porcupine Intersection here. Once I posted photographs onto Instagram and Facebook and such. A lot of people were asking for quills. I didn't actually have time to take out too many when I sat down here. I took out some, but there's still a lot to this animal. Hair, quills, maybe even some meat that can be salvaged. So a lot of people were interested, including one of the, one of the artists from the studio, uh, Mary Ellen, 
little mustache who she thinks a lot like me as soon as uh, as soon as she heard me talk about this um, this dead porcupine she started thinking what can we what can we get from it maybe we can get some meat definitely we can get some quills some hair so uh, we've used her truck come back here and gonna uh, get this animal Wow! already there's like chunks big chunks of fur and stuff here I don't know if something's got at it already Take it and see see how bruised up and stuff it is. I imagine it got bumped by a vehicle. So it, it might not be any meat salvageable, but definitely some good hair for roaches and such. Lots of quills for quill work. <laughs> yeah, you must have got run over right on the head because his head is just flat. That might mean he's got a good hind quarter in there somewhere. <laughs> that girl is poison. But we'll take both the hair and the quills, of course. <laughs> Much. You just keep that constantly going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sparing my uh, six dollars. <laughs> um, <fine. laughs> yeah, I decided not to cut him open because he's pretty stinky. Is he pretty stinky? He smells, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we'll take all the quills and hair. Mm -hmm. Might might open a leg and see how it looks, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to risk it with the stinky. Yeah. I lost my sense of smell. Um, and I Probably even sell some of these quills. People want to. Oh, look at how beautiful. You know what I what, what I was thinking of was just uh, getting some of that two-sided tape mm. and uh, just taking some of that. Some of these are going to be very short, but. Wow. Which way are you thinking? Let's go this way. Yeah, there's some. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. So, that's a, that's a quandary. Yeah, we'll kind of have to clean it after, I think, eh? Okay. Because yeah. it's just so much to.
just gonna put the porcupine over here by this cottonwood tree. The magpies can feast on him, take his meat, cache it all around the forest. The landscape. Not the first such offering I've left here for them.